So you heard how we created these different types of sounds and timbres by manually moving the knobs. But it would be kind of nice to be able to recall them sort of instantaneously. Uh, luckily, we can do that because we have scenes. And what scenes are is a way to store a vast range of parameter settings for your montage performance. So I'm going to start very simply, and I'm going to use it to basically store preset variations of our synth sounds here. Um, and I'm going to be using scenes to do it. Uh, read the uh, article that accompanies this video to get the details, but basically scenes store the super knob value. The super knob can be linked to any of the eight uh, assignable knobs here so that when you call up a scene it can instantaneously recall certain settings. So as I went through and did all those variations manually, we can preset them. So in this example, what I've set up is our scene one, which is the default, is our uh, brass sound. Push the scene two button, and it changes to our electric uh, piano uh, wave structure and envelope. And scene three automatically recalls our uh, res wave with the percussive hybrid synth pad thing. So scene one brass, electronic piano, and our synth pad. So the next extension of that, you'd be thinking, hey, it'd be cool if I can change them in real time and not just bring back static snapshots. Well, luckily we can do that because we can use what's called motion sequences. Motion sequences are complex real-time control of a vast range of parameters within the montage. So let's select scene one, our brass sound, and now turn on the motion sequence button that's uh, right next door to that, and let's play a note and see what happens. notice while I was holding some notes and playing in time to my tempo you heard completely different timbres um, when those notes were triggered and that's because the position of the super knob and the timing of my notes lines up so that you get that electric piano sound the hybrid sound or the brass sound so let's do that again <laughs> So that behavior occurred because I was holding one note while I played individual discrete notes in time to our tempo of 110, and we caught the motion sequence at different values of the knob to hear those different sounds. If I play individual notes without holding um, one uh, sustained note, you'll hear that sound never changed. It was always the uh, electric piano type sound. That's because we're using what's called first on mode for the motion sequence. Motion sequences are monophonic, meaning they apply to all the notes played in the performance at the same time. So if I start the motion sequence using first on mode, it's running automatically. It will not re-trigger from the beginning as I play additional notes while that's being held. But if I don't hold the note, it starts fresh with each note. I'm a big fan of the first on mode because I like the interplay that I get playing combinations of either block chords or sustained legato lines. It's really interesting. In our prior example, we used the arpeggiator to play while we twiddled all the knobs in real time. Well, now we can use motion sequence synchronized to our arpeggiator to play some or all of the parameters 
in real time automatically, and we can tweak knobs that we leave for manual control. So I've got that set up here as well. So um, now we're going to turn on the arpeggiator. We're going to make sure the motion sequence is still on. And we're going to play a little chord here. So you heard the arpeggiator playing its pattern. Our motion sequence is playing along synchronized to it. So depending on the position of the uh, super knob, you heard the different waveform and envelope sounds. So each note in that arpeggiator pattern had a different brass or keyboard or a percussive synth sound to it. So let's hear that again. <laughs> Now, we can also manually play with all the knobs that we haven't assigned to the super knob. So let's show an example of playing the knobs while the arpeggiator and motion sequence is doing their thing here. got a little sloppy there, but at the end you end up hearing something that kind of sounded like uh, analog style hard sync. So that's one way how we can interplay all these real-time controls with manual controls plus our arpeggiator. With the rest of the scenes in this tutorial voice, um, I've set up just different combinations of arpeggiator patterns and such. Here's scene four. <laughs> Here's scene five. Here's scene six. Here's scene seven. And here's scene eight. So remember, you can use the assignable switches to hear the individual carrier and uh, modulators that you're using as your building blocks. You can play with a whole bunch of the knobs. We have the knob one mod wave parameter controlled by our super knob and motion sequences. And we have the arpeggiator to uh, play the notes and interact with everything else. So we're starting to put together some of the fundamentals on some of the really cool things you can do with the FMX engine, scenes, knobs, and motion sequences. So again, take the time to play around with all these parameters I've set up for the knobs. Listen to the arpeggiator patterns, play with the motion sequences, dive in, edit, make your own motion sequences. We're going to start building on the basics of these first two tutorial voices to start actually building complex finished synth sounds. Until next time. <laughs>